Thank you to Hope Disrobed for this clip. Go to her channel and give her some love. Not like long videos, but this is just something that's been weighing on my, my heart and my mind for a couple weeks. A couple weeks ago, something happened to me within a relationship and it really just opened my eyes as to like how hurtful men are. I've known that for quite some time, but it's like men are so hurtful with no remorse. No care in the world. Like they just, they don't, they don't give a fuck. And it's just, it's just becoming a little much for me. Last night was the nail in the coffin though. I'm not doing a story time cause I don't, I'm just not gonna do that. But men are just so hurtful and it's like, I just, I no longer have a desire to get in a relationship. I no longer have the desire to get married. Damn near about to give up on my dreams of becoming a mom one day, like, I can't, I can't deal with it anymore, you guys. And I know y'all gonna be like, oh, take a break. I took a break all this year. I took a break all this year. I done read the self-help books. Self-help books. I done watched She Was Seven. It's like, I actually want the love. I don't want to, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to use a man for money. Like, don't want to just use him for what he can do for me, even though that's what they do to us. I just don't want to do that. It should not be this difficult. It's like, I'm not trying to have a disdain for men. I'm not trying to be a misandrist. I'm not trying to H word men again, but it's like, how could you not? They are so hurtful. They are disrespectful, disloyal, rude, selfish. Think about nobody but themselves. And I'm sure there are some good men out there. I met one before. One. You guys are going to say, oh, maybe it's you. Because I, I know the men are going to come in and, be, and just put it all back on me. They're going to completely dismiss my feelings and put it back on me. I'm used to it. I'm the one actually in therapy working through things and, th and stuff like that. Do you get what I'm saying? Having to go to therapy for people who won't go to therapy or who don't see any wrong in their, their behavior. <sighs> God, I can't, I can't do it no more, you guys. I don't want to, I don't want to be involved with men anymore. So I think it's just time for me to just really focus on myself 103,000%, like really just strictly lock in on everything that I want to do. Everything I want to do. I don't have time for the, for the, for the, for the games. I don't time, I don't have time to get my heart broken again. I don't have time to be pulling up on you. Like, I don't have time to be finding addresses and stuff like that anymore. I don't have time, but just, I can't take it anymore, you guys. It took everything in me last night not to cry, but it's like, I, I'm, I feel defeated. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. I won't lie, this brought tears to my eyes. It really did. I saw it a few weeks ago and, <laughs> I felt it to the core of me because when it hasn't been me power, protect your peace and release attachment. Don't never give a man power over you. Because at the end of the day, man will leave you in the desert with no water. And that's a fact. So I learned this lesson last year, and it's one I recommend everyone learn sooner rather than later. Just yesterday, a friend called me having a panic attack in her car because her boyfriend had called her an hour before and said that he loved her, all of these nice things, and that his family can't wait to meet her for Thanksgiving. An hour and a half later, and this is no exaggeration on the timeline, called her back and said that he's a high value man and that he can do better than her, but she will never be able to do better than him, and that is over, and then hung up before she could even say anything. Hey everyone, let me jump in here really quick. This is very impactful and heartfelt what's going on. I want you to hit the subscribe button. I want you to hit the like and the notification bell so that when part two or the next part of this series comes up, you'll automatically get a notification that it's been loaded. Okay, I would really want you to engage in the comments and you can give your experience as much as you're comfortable with. Keep in mind that this is on the internet. Okay, this is, this is for all of us. It's for me and it's for you. Okay, back to the video. I've had friends where their date will leave in the middle of the date while they're in the bathroom. I've had friends whose boyfriends will break up with them on their birthday, on days of death, on graduation, boyfriends taking other girls on their birthday trip. And this is just the last year. This is just 2023. 
Personally, when this happened to me, I decided that I was going to take the next year to not date anybody and it was the best decision that I could have ever made for myself. I accomplished every single goal that I had this year. Just bought a new car, about to move into a beautiful apartment, happiest I've ever been, more peace than I've ever felt. I'm surrounded by so many different types of love that I don't really feel like anything's missing. And that's not to say that I'll never date again, I'm literally sure that I will. But as a girl who has high standards and values, you cannot vet for a man blindsiding you. I consider myself like very like in the know and it happened to me. Even looking back now, I'm like, I can't really, I could have never predicted that. Be careful, invest in yourself. Just invest in yourself. The right person will come along, but be very picky. Do not let everybody just date you. It is not worth it. It is not worth your peace. It is not worth your time. Don't do it. Tender age of 15, I realized what men really are. When my high school boyfriend, who I'd been dating throughout the whole of high school, decided to take a stranger who he had given barely 15 words to, to prom instead of me. Knowing fully well that obviously nobody else would ask me just to shame me, to make me feel hurt. Whatever the purpose was, I took a key lesson from that. That number one, the idea that you're looking for happiness or fulfillment from a relationship will be the downfall of most women. At the end of the day, love and Prince Charming might not happen for everybody. But you know what can always happen for you? Happiness, because you're in charge of that. When you go to bed at night and it's your friend or your family members that made you happy, you're not thinking, oh my God, I wish it was a man that made me happy. No, you're going to bed happy regardless. Even the ones that are good, are good until it serves them no more. Do you understand? Many of them anyways, not all of them. But we already know it's a game. So at this point, I really feel like we should just start being selfish. You've heard this. She ain't lying. Some of these niggas is just dreadful. They're horrible. They're horrible people. They're horrible people. And it, it ain't always about discernment, to be honest, because you can never really know what somebody's going to do. You can only trust them 99%. There's always that 1% chance that they'll do you shysty. And it's even worse when it comes out the blue. It's even worse when it comes from somebody you didn't expect it from. However, comma, I will say there are always signs. There are always signs. Like the girls who say they were with somebody and then out of the blue, some shit happened. Okay. I think it is so rare that the shit is completely out of the blue. Like this man probably have has been giving you hints since you met him of what type of person he is and how he moves with you. If a man tells you how he acted in his past relationships, but he's different with you, that's a sign. That's a sign, okay? If he if he do something or say something a little off color, that's a sign. He joked too much about something, that's a sign. These are signs. And if you let them pass you up, you might be the next victim. Also, I just wanna say, you're gonna to wanna to save this and favorite it for later. Share it to your Jalulu friend, not who's being Jalulu in a positive way, but Jalulu about y'all know who. Now the key is to find a man that likes what you like because a man is gonna choose himself first every time. Even if he's sacrificing for his family, it's because he wants and gets credit and feels good about sacrificing for his family. It's always going to be for him. You have to understand that. So get a man who likes what you like. That way, when he's choosing himself, you're just a byproduct of his choice and you benefit too. Harsh, maybe. Truth, yes. Now, there have been studies on men from neuroscience to biology to psychology to religion to the everything. And this is what they say collectively about them. Men take, women give. So if men are gonna go around taking and you are putting yourself on the chopping block to be taken from, because you wanna give, 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 this is how you offset that, okay? And I'm gonna repeat myself. Find a man who likes what you like. That way when he is serving him, you get the service, okay? Let's say you like traveling and a man who plans trips. Are you going to go find a man who never been nowhere before and try to talk him into and leverage your worth against his inability to be able pl to plan a trip? Or are you going to go find a man who likes what you like so you can benefit? A man who loves to travel, a man who has so many itineraries planned for the next year and who wants to see you. No, no, no. You know what usually happens? You find a man who's not interested in you at all, who doesn't want to do the things that you want to do, and then you leverage your worth against it. And then you cry and you call your friends and you say, why isn't he doing this? Why isn't he doing that? He must not care. No, he cares about himself more. They always will. They always will. Now, you don't see me being, woe is me, somebody help me please, because I understand it now. And now that I understand it, I'm trying to help y'all understand too.
And what I've seen happen is that women don't take accountability. Again, this is not from a pick Misha standpoint. This is an empowerment moment. Women don't take accountability and responsibility for the fact that you are a woman. If you are around a man, remove yourself. You want us to hold your hand and say, I know you're sad. I know you're this. I know you're that. I know it's hard. No, baby. No. That's over with because women who have experienced this understand that you're choosing to torture yourself. We know that. So you can't play the woe is me shit no more. This is a choice, baby. It's America. Even if you outside of America, you're in a world where you're a woman and all you have to do is start focusing on yourself. I don't want to hear men are selfish and men are hurtful and men are hateful. They are. They are. But what are you if you're dealing with them in the way that you are? Oh, I'm just a people pleaser. Like, what are you? Ask that question again. If men are all these things and you're dealing with them, what are you? And why are you doing it? Which brings me to my next point. You have to turn that energy inward. This creator said multiple times, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with men like this. I just feel like that. Exactly. You don't want to play the game. You want to recreate it and pretend that it doesn't exist. And that's not serving you. There's a lot of creators on here who tells you and teaches you about men. They do. Y'all will quote them and say, y'all don't want to do it. Y'all still would like to believe the fairy tale that you painted in your head. And it's not working. It's not working. So this summer, I read Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. And something that this creator said in her video reminded me of this book. It talks about the difference between internalizers versus externalizers. So the men that are super hurtful with no remorse that she's speaking about in her video are the externalizers. And instead of like a normal person internalizing your anxiety and pain, depression, they act it out and they push it onto other people. When they have to face the consequences of their actions, they usually use denial to avoid those feelings of shame. As a result of that denial, they repeatedly feel these hits of low self-worth and a sense of feeling bad. But to avoid total self-hatred, they rid themselves of shame by blaming other people, making excuses, and blaming external factors. So the reason why these people never grow is because as soon as that shame hits, they need to immediately feel better by shifting the blame onto someone else. And the only way to grow and learn and feel peace is by addressing that trauma that's so built up, sitting with the discomfort and learning from it. She just made a great point and I feel that about anything that you're going through. If you're I would be very careful, but if, if you're medicating in any way or using any other type of an addiction or anything like that to get through a pain, then you have to sit with it. You have to deal with it. You have to think about it. You have to pray about it. You have to question yourself. What brought me here? What did I do? What did I not see? What did I not ignore? What did I choose to do? What was I looking for? What did I need? You have to ask yourself these questions and you have to sit there until you figure that out and nothing else can help that. But because these people are essentially running from themselves, they will never do that. So please, if it's one thing that you take from this video, do not take another person's destructive behavior towards you personally, because I promise you they are just acting out what they feel inside, which is chaos. As somebody who has horror stories, dating horror stories for literally days, guys are starting to get a little bit more evil with the way they do things. And by all means, I'm not a misandrist like she was saying in the video. I think men are awesome. I've had some great men in my life. But truly, there is something about the way that guys go about things nowadays that are really, it's really hurtful. And it does make me feel like marriage will never be a thing for me. And if you know me, I love marriage. But like, I don't know if it'll be a thing because some of the things that the guys do are just so unhinged. And by all means, I'm not perfect. But like one thing that I love that she said in the video is like, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to therapy. I'm writing in my journals. I'm trying to heal. And I just feel like guys don't do that. And then everything is now put on us. And I'm tired of it. And it is exhausting. Someone else did this video and said, you cannot vet for a man blindsiding you. And I think that's a factor that a lot of men don't like for us to talk about. They always try to say, oh, there had to have been signs. No. Not always. Like sometimes a guy really is perfect. It's perfect. 
I'm not saying this is the case 100% of the times. Yes, sometimes there are glaring red flags. and Sometimes there are more subtle flags that maybe you still could have caught. But a lot of the times, a lot of the times, these things come out of absolutely nowhere. But whether you're blindsided or you saw the signs, the best thing you can do for yourself is still leave. Take a page out of men's book called Self-Preservation and leave anything that doesn't serve you. Never get too invested. The moment he hits the switch on you, hit the dough. Get out. And then you come on here and you and and, and you and you try you tell your story and you get gaslit. The men are like, oh well, you should have chose better. Where where are the good options at? Where where are they at? Cause I don't see none. I, I don't see any. So so what do you want me to do? So what so what do we have to do? We have to, you know, be self sufficient, extremely self sufficient, ex extremely independent, because you can't depend on y'all for nothing. And I'm not even trying to come from a place of I hate men, but it's just the reality. There's too many people, women in general, but specifically black women coming on this app constantly saying the same thing, having no faith that they'll find their partner because of how vile men and their brethren are. What are we doing? What are we doing? When is this going to stop? Dating and getting to know people shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't. We're grown. I'm going to be 27 in March. We are grown. We all got stuff to do and bills to pay. What are we doing? What are we doing? Like she said, people will, there's more women who are in therapy. I'm in therapy too. Uh, and like, you know, like the people are, women specifically are putting in that extra work to work on themselves so they can be the best partner for them and their, for not even for just their partner, for their friends, for their family, depending on, you know, situation, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's all situational. But people, specifically black women, are going to therapy, trying to unpack their traumas, trying to be a better person, trying to do right by people, just to get frigged over time and time and time again. Who has the time and energy for that? Ooh, child. Listen, I have not been in the dating world like that. So I am fairly new to this. I do not know. I did not know that you guys are going through these levels of struggle. Like this is insane. I say that, but I've had my little taste of <laughs> problems. I don't want to be involved with men anymore. Okay, y'all. I've seen this video stitched up and down. Guys, if you've hung around this long, you're a real trooper. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe. And watch the rest of the video. She's given up hope on dating and men in general. Well, specifically, let's just say black men, because I don't want to speak on all men right now. I want to speak on black men because I'm a black woman. But um, I want to give y'all some tips. I've been saying this same shit repeatedly year after year. I got a whole YouTube channel. I've had my YouTube channel for about seven years. Thousands of videos on narcissistic behavior, sociopathic behavior, psychopathic behavior, Machiavellian behavior in black men. When will you ladies listen and follow through? Okay. There's two types of black women. There are those of us that are empathetic and we're not narcissists. We don't have the full blown disorder. Everybody has the traits. We live in a narcissistic so uh, society. Most of us come from toxic, dysfunctional families where our parents and grandparents were narcissistic. So it naturally, we're going to pick up the traits from breaking the pattern because you will not break free from the same individual that raised you. That's your original hater. That's your original bully. It starts with mom and dad. It starts in the childhood. When you're able to cut them off and set boundaries, then take your ass to therapy and go heal. And healing is a lifelong thing. It's never ending. So, because I learned to deal with the root of my problems that came from my mother and father. And with them out of my life, I'm able to raise my discernment. I'm able to see better. I'm able to stay celibate and, and maneuver and spot toxic people a mile the fuck away. Not just toxic men, people in general. I can read through them my discernment is wicked. So when you do start to heal and you feel like you want to get back out into the dating game, listen to me. Those first couple of dates, those first two to three dates, if he even makes it to the third date, you should be asking serious questions. A lot of these ladies uh, made a specific point about being black women and dating black men. And I'm a white woman and I've always been with white men. So what I can say to this conversation is there's no difference. <laughs> uh, I could have said 
all of the things that they said and meant it 100%, whether it was something that happened to me or something that's happened to my friends and people that I know. Um, and also, on that note, I also want to say that I know that this whole video was women speaking on men, but I do know some men who are also um, the personality type of being an empath or being a nice person, a giver, being a people pleaser, and the same narcissistic, you know, the same description of these men in a woman uh, will take advantage of those men in the same kind of way and they, they cause the same kind of hurt and the same kind of pain. So I just want to acknowledge that also. And there were a lot of good points made here, but I really feel like the hurt and the pain that these ladies are describing specifically in the behaviors that they described from these men are very, like the other lady said, very narcissistic personalities specifically. And that at one point, like the other lady said, you got to look at you. Um, I'd say this from my heart because this is what happened to me. Um, yeah, that's what it is. And you recognize, okay, I'm, I'm being mistreated and abused. In my case, I was married. But why are you with a man that would abuse you? Why did you choose an abusive man? And you say, well, I didn't choose an abusive man. Like, like the other lady said, there were signs. What was missing in you that you wanted? What was wrong with you? In my case, I'm very codependent and I had a messed up childhood. I had some really messed up family dynamics just like they all described. And that's why I say my family's white. You know, uh, we weren't uh, rich or middle class even. We're sort of like on the upper level of poor. Just where, you know, paycheck to paycheck kind of thing. And um, I had the same experience. Now, I don't date. And I'm not going to date not in the way that they're describing it. And this is one thing that I'd like to be able to say back to those ladies is um, I have faith that I'll have a relationship again, but I'm not feeling the need to go date to find it because absolutely I'm working on myself and I'm doing the work. And that's why I'm watching these videos and hearing what these smart ladies had to say because I'm trying to figure out what am I and, and I have ignored myself and I've neglected myself and all the things that I was interested in and all the things I was good at who I haven't been doing any of that I mean I've been babysitting a narcissist for 15 years girls listen 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 to me 15 years don't do it it's so hard to start over okay you don't have to date. You don't have to be out every weekend and you don't have to feel like you're not wanted or unworthy because you don't have a date tonight or you don't have some guy that's, that's texting you like crazy because you are a whole person. And I'm talking to me too because I'm learning this lesson myself. But I would say this. I have two daughters and I have a son. And I would say this to all three of them. You are a whole entire person. And you should not lose sight of the things that you are and that you want and that you enjoy, what you want out of life. And you should be seeking those things every day. And to be a better person and a smarter person and, and all those things. And you don't have to give up being a good person and you don't have to give up having a soft heart. But what we all had to do and what I'm only just now learning to do and I'm 44 is you have to have boundaries and you have to know what you want. And I didn't know what I wanted. And I didn't think I deserved to have what I wanted. And I didn't know there was another way to get it. And I felt lost and alone. And I felt the need to be attached to somebody to have that attention so that I would feel good. And it took a long time of being mistreated to figure out that I don't need all that. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. And you are too. And I want you to go back and listen to all of that again. And I just wanted to add my little bit to the end because it was all really good. And I, I felt it. And, and I know they were specifically, like I said, they all, all of them made a point to say, you know, that I'm a black woman and, and I'm dealing with black men and I'm not. And I wanted to say that I'm not. But it's the same. Y'all, it's the same. And like I said, the, the, I know a few really good men. But they're also an empath, sweetheart, you know, given type person. And they were taken advantage of by that same spirit. And I've heard somebody else on another video talking about how it's a spirit. So maybe it's even beyond us. It's on a spiritual level. But you gotta, you gotta be you. Okay? Wow, that was a lot. Thank you for watching this video. Like and, and subscribe. Please hit the notification bell. Leave me some comments and tell me your thoughts.